Okay, in this problem we have a motorized toy car. Let's draw our toy car. And the toy car is going down a miniature race course. So here's our miniature race course. And he goes at a constant speed of 35 miles per hour on the way down the course, but then he goes in reverse and he goes back the other way and he goes 15 miles per hour back the other direction. Okay. Uh, and they don't give us a distance for the course, so let's just call it D. So we'll say the D is the distance all the way down and then he turned around or just went in reverse and went back that same distance D. And they want to know what's the average speed. Okay, well, average speed we have a formula for. So average speed is, now this is different from average velocity. Average speed is total distance divided by time. Now remember that average velocity is displacement divided by time. So this is total distance divided by time. Average speed is a scalar and average velocity is a vector. So since this is a scalar, we don't need to worry about direction. Okay, so if you went at a constant speed, then we can use the rate equation. We know that V is D over T. The rate is the distance over the time. And so the total distance, okay, well the total distance we know is 2D because he went down the track and then he went in reverse and went back. The total time, well there's a time for the way to the end of the track and then there's another time when he went in reverse. So I'll call those T1 and T2. So T1 is the time to go from the start to the finish and then T2 is t the time to go from the finish back to the start in reverse. Okay, so I don't know any of these things, but maybe I can do a little bit of algebra here. I do know the rate equation, and if I solve this for time, I get d over v, so maybe I can plug that in. So time 1 would be d over v1, because I do know v1, and then time 2 would be d over v2, and I know v2, and then this is still 2d. Okay, so this is looking pretty good here. I think I can cancel out a D. There's a D in every term. So if I want, I can rewrite this without the Ds. Can you see how maybe you can cancel out a D in every term? So you're allowed to do that because there is a D in every term. If there was a D missing there, for instance, you wouldn't be able to do it. But since they have a D everywhere, we can cancel out one of those Ds. And so I get 1 over V1 plus 1 over v2, and then that's all underneath 2. Okay, so this is a messy compound fraction here. So let's add these things together. We have to give them a common denominator. That'll be v1, v2. And so I can make this v2 over v1, v2, plus v1 over v1, v2. Okay. And now they have a common denominator, I can add them, so the numerator will just be v1 plus v2. And the denominator will be v1, v2. And this whole thing is still underneath 2. Okay. So now, since I have a fraction in the denominator here, I can flip it and bring it up to the numerator. So this becomes... 2v1 v2 divided by v1 plus v2. Okay, and now I'm ready to plug in. I actually know all of the different v's. So let's do that here and get the final answer. So, okay. Uh, v1, that's 35 miles per hour. Now you could switch this into meters per second, but since everything is in miles per hour and we want the answer in miles per hour, we'll just leave everything in miles per hour. Okay, so v1 is... 35 miles per hour and V2 is 15 miles per hour and then up top here we have 2 times V1 V2 
So that's two times 35 miles per hour times 15 miles per hour. Okay, and if you think about it, the units work out so that your final answer is in miles per hour. And if you do this on the calculator, you end up getting 21 miles per hour, and that's your answer.